Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX, and welcome to our weekly education class. I hope everybody's having an enjoyable weekend, and the uh, we're in the height of summer vacation season. So don't forget, market volatility should be quite low because of the change for the summer. Now, because the ETX is a regulated provider, I've got to read you a risk warning. So let me read that and get it out of the way. Trading of binary options may result in the loss of the amount of your deposit. Please ensure that you fully understand the risk and seek independent advice if necessary. ETS Capital provides an execution-only service, and therefore any market analysis, opinion, commentary, or any other information which is provided during this webinar is for educational purposes only and is not intended to be a personal recommendation or construed as advice. All traders must understand there's a high element of randomness to the markets. Therefore, they may experience both winning and losing trades while following any trading strategy. Different traders following the same strategy will achieve different levels of performance. Past performance is, no, is not an indication of future results. Now, ETX is a fast-growing financial services company based in London. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority, and we also are a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. Now, tonight we're going to be discussing trend patterns and chart patterns and their interpretations. Now, technical analysis refers to the study of financial markets based on price movement. It uses the assumption that price of, the, price, the price of a share reflects all information about that share, including market sentiment, as well as its perceived value. Charting refers to technical analysis that is performed through careful inspection of price data uh, for identification of well-known patterns that emerge in prices, for example, head and shoulders, channels, triangles, wedges. Now, chart patterns are well documented in technical analysis literature and are based on psychological phenomena that occur between the buyers and sellers of financial instruments in a, li in a liquid market. Pattern formation do not form a trading system, but rather provide an indication of future trend of a share price as price breaks a key psychological barrier in the form of support and resistance lines. Now, there are numerous patterns, all according to the shapes that, the uh, that you see on the price graph. We have triangles, channels, wedges. We even have head and shoulder. We have things called pendants and flags. We have things called teacups. You know, some of these people have come up with all types of names for patterns. But the most popular are triangles, chi triangles, channels, wedges, and head and shoulders. Pendants and flags are just other names for triangles. Now, there are three types of triangles, all based on where the horizontal and vertical slopes are, where the support and resistance are. And the names of triangles are very easy. A symmetrical triangle, where both the, the two angles are almost equal angles, an ascending triangle where you have one strong uptrending angle and one horizontal angle or horizontal line, and a descending triangle, which consists of a horizontal line and a intersecting trend line. And they look exactly what they say, but knowing necessarily the difference whether it's ascending, descending, or symmetrical are not that important. Now, it's easy to see that in an ascending triangle, it looks like it would form during an uptrend. And a descending triangle looks like it would conform during a downtrend. But they can, it's very odd, but they can develop in the opposite trends. A triangle is formed between converging support and resistance lines. A negative sloping resistance line indicates a reducing level of profit taking or more uncertainty about the value of an asset. With a positive sloping and support line, the price levels are squeezed into a corner. Once the support line or the resistance line is broken, pressure that is built up as a result of the uncertainty is released 
and a certain amount of momentum is added to the price change in the direction of the breakout. So in other words, in all triangles, we're getting this pent up action. We're getting where buyers or sellers are being pushed into the center of this angle. They're getting locked in between the support and resistance lines. At some given point, those buyers and sellers are going to make up their mind and they're going to break out either upward or downward. When they do, there is a momentum that is added to that breakout. And we can calculate the breakout, or the break up or the breakdown based on the movement of the triangle. In other words, the difference or the value between the uh, support and resistance lines in the formation of the triangle. And we'll get to the formula a little bit later. <clears throat> now, there are specific variations of angles that can occur, namely ascending and descending triangles. An ascending triangle has a horizontal resistance line and a descending angle, a triangle has a horizontal support line. So in other words, if we look at the examples on the right, the cl most clear cut is the descending triangle in this example, okay, where this tr trend line or this line, this resistance line, or actually the support line, is descending down and the resistance line has stayed completely horizontal. And what is it formed? It's formed a beautifully shaped triangle. Now, they don't have to be so perfect. What we're looking for is price getting congested into a central point in an angle. Now, if you notice here in the ascending triangle, the resistance line is slightly on an angle also. It can be. And the uptrending angle isn't as strong as we see down here, but it's still a very good angle. Here we can see in a standard symmetrical triangle, okay, we have a beautiful point of congestion where the, the two lines merge to form the triangle. And then what do we have? We have a breakout. And it broke up, and we could have measured this breakout because the top of the breakout is usually equal distance from the top to the bottom of the opening or the, I forget what they call it, this line of the triangle. And we could measure that. i just try to get my markers off here. Okay, using triangles to trade. It's important to note that an ascending triangle can also be found in a downtrend. So as I said earlier, they can form in the opposite trends because what you're looking for is the formation of that triangle. But what we're concerned with is when we see the triangle formation, we want to see and we get it into the congestion point, whether it breaks upward or downward, break up or down, as long as we have a breakout, we can calculate that breakout. So the distance between the rising trend line and the resistance line here and here, we can measure it. When it's on a price graph, we can see what price the asset was here and what price the asset is here. And we can measure that, that distance. Okay. So if the resistance level had a level of 1, and the start of our trend line had a resistance value of 5, 0.5, then our projected value would be an upward 1.5. And we could then measure this 1.5 of this distance or one and a half times this distance. Now, to verify that you actually have a good triangle and a breakout, we have to have some rules. Okay. 
It is important to note that an ascending triangle can be found in a downtrend. So the combination of the name of the, tri the triangle and the market trend is deceiving. Thus, the financial asset needs to test the resistance level twice, and the asset closing price needs to be higher than the previous closing price. In other words, the closing price has to follow the rising trend line. Now, the next thing we have to look at is volume. Next, we come to volume. When in an ascending triangle or a descending triangle, volume usually contracts. Although there are a few number of cases that show volume has not contracted, but the pattern has been displayed. This has been significant. This is, can be signified by the blue line that you see on the bottom of your charts where you can see volume. Because what happens is price gets pent up into that crucial center point of the triangle. The buyers and sellers are unsure. So they stop buying or selling and you would see volume contract and then volume will burst and jump up when it is a real breakout and that's just a tick above the angle. Now besides triangles, we have rectangles and channels. A rectangle is just when price is moving sideways and you can draw a line between tops and bottoms. So you get double tops or double bottoms. But it is considered a chart pattern and it can be measured. A, a channel is the same except price is moving down but you can find the high and the low and draw connecting lines and you would have double tops and double bottoms along the trend line. So. You also have up channels and down channels. Now, similar to a, a channel, a rectangle is a pattern formed between horizontal and support. So we're looking at horizontal and we're looking at support and resistance lines. Even though they don't look like trend lines, but they do look like trend lines, they are not trend lines because they don't follow the same rules as trend lines. Here, what we're doing is we're trying to connect a series of swing highs or swing lows over a short period of time to form this channel, this triangle, this horizontal line. That's it. There are no rules like you had in standard trend lines. Now, rectangles and triangles are sometimes referred to as flags and pennants. Okay. Lots of people use the names flags and pennants. I just stick with rectangles and, and channels because they're exactly what I see. But there are all types of strategies that deal with a flag that's called a continu bullish continuation channel down or a bearish continuation channel up. A pennant would be defined as a bullish continuation triangle or a bearish continuation triangle, whether the price is moving up or down. Then we have wedges. <clears throat> wedges are almost identical to triangles. And I don't try to define whether it's a wedge or a triangle. So wedges are similar to triangles in these patterns are formed between converging and support and resistance lines. However, where the support and resistance lines in a triangle have one position and one positive and one negative slope, the support and resistance line in a wedge would have either positive or negative slopes. Wedges with positive slopes are called rising wedges, hence just like they look like, or, net, or the opposite falling wedges. So a lot of this is just plain old fashioned common sense. Now, the most common wedges are found as breakouts in the opposite direction of the wedge. So, in other words, and it's a very common factor, when you have a wedge, but it also kind of holds true for a triangle, when you have a wedge or you have a triangle, most likely the breakout will be in the opposite direction of the current trend. So, in other words, we have a rising wedge here, and we get the breakout, and we see the end of the uptrend. Here we have a falling wedge, and then we get the breakout, and we have the opposite direction and the end of that trend. Now, in this case, we saw the trend completely end 
but then it recovered up here equidistant to the previous wedge and then it returned to a very strong downtrend. But this could have given us a very nice trade at this level at the breakout. Now, the most talked about, the most common, not common, um, but the most prevalently talked about, the one traders look for the most, and the most unique name is head and shoulders. When a head and shoulders pattern develops, it is very accurate. A head and shoulders pattern describes a price movement that depicts a head and shoulders. Okay. And there are some basic rules, but not firm rules. When price moves up above a support line, it will then peak and fall down. When it peaks and supports that support line, and it peaks up higher than the previous peak, we can say we see the formation of a, of a head. Because what we have is the left shoulder and the formation. This green line, which is the support line, is called the neckline. We would expect price to, retra to retrace, come back down to this neckline, and bounce off. Until we get this part, we're not even sure we have a head and shoulder. We're not sure what we have. When we get it peaked again, we would expect the peak or the formation of the right shoulder to be fairly equal, it does not have to be exact, because it could be a lopsided person, to the peak of the, where we have the peak of the right shoulder, that it should be equal to or fairly, you know, fairly close to the peak of the original left shoulder. And then we would expect the price to come back down to that neckline. And what we have is a perfectly formed head and shoulders. Now remember, it's just like people. Some of us have long necks, some of us have short necks. Some of us have big shoulders, some of us have lopsided shoulders. But we have the definite formation of this head and shoulders. Now, different people, different strategists, different traders out there have all types of odd sets of rules about how much this can be different from this and how much difference you have to have to the head. Okay. For me, there is no rule. As long as the left and the right shoulder are fairly the same and the head is peaked up high enough to be a head, not just a pimple, and you've got the truly developed neckline, you have a good head and shoulders. You also have what's called an inverse head and shoulders when it's formed exactly the opposite in the opposite trend. Now, a head and shoulders, when it's fully developed, gives you a lot of good trading opportunities because when it develops, it, it takes a lot of steps, it takes a lot of time, but when it's developed, it is very reliable. Now, the popular head and shoulders pattern is essentially a triple top pattern, except that instead of all the peaks hitting the same resistance level, the head peaks slightly higher than his shoulders. Some investors have specific beliefs about the amount of the bearish fallback that should occur between the tops and some allowing a 10% loss before the price returns to test the resistance level. Others require 15%. Like I said, I don't require any as long as I see the formation of a head and shoulders and a distinct head and shoulders. Now these patterns are very popular among traders and analysts as they predict trend reversal with relative reliability. Signal strength is bolstered by agreement from other indicators, such as waning volume as the trend nears exhaustion. So a lot of times you need to combine common sense. If a head and shoulders develops in a very weak pattern or a sideways action, it's not telling you anything. If a head and shoulders pattern develops, in a strong defined trend, it is an absolute trend reversal indicator. So you have to take it and look at where it develops in the current trend. And then an inverse head and shoulders is exactly the opposite. Now these things are a little bit hard to recognize because if you look at this drawing, oh look, that's easy, I can see that. 
But when you look at it in the real-time charts, it's not as easy to notice. So you have to get comfortable with them. But what you can see here is price moves up, hits the resistance, falls back down to form the left shoulder. We don't know it's a left shoulder then. Peaks up, it goes higher than the, the resistance line. Goes back down to that support line and moves back up to that resistance line. Now we know we have a very positive head and shoulders. It comes back down to the neckline and then it breaks out and we have a trend reversal indicator. So you have to get used to seeing them to define them because like I said, they don't happen very quickly, but you have to see them in price movement. Like you see on this chart, okay, again, it's hard to see, but we see the development in the neckline and having a true neckline is very important because there is a standard easy formula. Once you've established the neckline and the headline, I see here how the left shoulder is a little lower than the right shoulder. So we have somebody who walks with a limp, who cares? When price forms the right shoulder and comes back down to that neckline, it is a sell indicator. It's a very strong sell signal because it's telling you this uptrend is now reversed. And we can see that it's broken into a downtrend. Now, there's a very easy formula. It's T for t t the, the, uh, the target is equal to the neckline minus the head equals the neck. So if we say, say this was gold we were looking at, gold is trading at 1250, say, or this neckline was formed at 1250. So the top of the head, we reached up here, was just for easy mathematical purposes, we're going to say 1275. Our target for where we would enter this signal and where we would like to exit the market would be this distance, which is T, which is our target price is equal to our neck, which is at 1250. Minus our head, which is 1275. Minus our neck, which is a 12.50. So what do we have? This is 25. So we have 12.50 minus 25, or 12.25. So therefore, our price target here would be 12.25. So we could expect we enter down here at, say, 1244, 1245, to be able to exit the market safely at 1225 and pick up 20 pips, $20, $25. Okay. And this is a simple standard calculation, but it works. Same thing on your inverse head and shoulder. You just reverse the numbers. Okay. Now, we also have what's called multiple top chart pattern, multiple tops chart patterns. It's an ongoing, is an ongoing uptrend that indicates the trend is nearing exhaustion. If a security repeatedly has difficulty surpassing a price point, a multiple top pattern may form. Okay. Now, these are known as double tops or double bottoms. Okay. Personally, I don't put much reliability in a double top or double bottom. They must appear in a well-defined trend. So when you have price moving up, a price hits a resistance line and bounces off of it, comes back down to this next support level, bounces back up, hits that resistance line again, it is saying that that is a trend reversal signal. Okay. I don't add much reliability to this because two times is not enough for me to say I'm going to make any decision. But then we have the triple tops and triple bottoms. That's the same exact pattern, but it happens a third time. When I see a well-formed triple top or triple bottom in a well-moving trend, 
I then say to myself, I definitely have a reversal signal. So triple tops and triple bottoms are reversal patterns that touch either the support or resistance line three times before reversing their trend. This is a stronger indicator of a trend rather than a double top or double bottom. Look for strong initial patterns and a significant breakout in order to confirm the reversal. Now, the surprising part is when we do have the formation, we can then do another simple calculation to get our target. So again, here on a real chart, we see price moved up, came above support, hit the resistance, bounced off, hit the resistance, came back up, bounced back down. When this is one, two, three, a triple top pattern, when it bounced out, it broke that support line, that is a sell signal. Okay. In order to estimate where our target would be, we have a very simple calculation. Target is S minus H. It is the support line minus, or the support line, I'm sorry, minus the height of the difference between the top and the support line. So the target is the support level here minus the distance between the high, the top, and the bottom of the support and resistance line. So in other words, if this was gold again and this line was at 1250, this was at 1275, our difference between here was what? 25. Our support line was here at 1250, and it would be 1250 minus 25 or 1225. And that would give us our target price. Now, triple, triple bottom is a price which is formed in a downtrend and followed by rising in prices. This pattern comprises three consecutive lows, just the opposite of a triple top. And the calculation is the exact opposite. It's the target is equal to R, which is the resistance level, plus the difference between the resistance and the support level. Now remember, it's ultimately important to look at the pattern that's developing in conjunction to the support, to the trend line. If you have a strong initial trend, your pattern should be very well developed and will be very reliable. When you have a weak initial trend, even though the pattern develops, it is not as reliable because it can be just a freak of how the the weak, the weak trend is continuing. Now, a pattern is said to have broken out once it has crossed either the support or the resistance line. If the pattern broke out in the same direction as the preceding trend, it is called a continuation pattern because it's now saying that the trend is going to continue in the direction it was going. If it breaks out in the opposite direction, it's considered a reversal pattern or signals that that trend reversal, that trend movement is over. So what do we have? We have falling wedges, bullish rectangles, bullish pennants, rising wedges, um, bearish rectangles, bearish pennants, and more. But if you notice, you can calculate at all times from the rise and where the previous highs and lows were and where the support and resistance level are to get your exit level, your entry level, which your entry to the trade will be when it breaks out of the wedge. In this, well, here, let's start with the top. In a falling wedge, we would get our entry level when it would break out of that falling wedge, because the falling is going down, and we expect it to break out. It breaks out, and that would give us our buy point. We could calculate our target, as we've learned, and we would put our stop loss at a, if we continue that, resistance line forward, that's where we would put our stop loss. Same thing we to calculate bullish rectangles, red, rising wedges. All of this will help give you three very important pieces of information. Stop loss, take profit, and entry levels. Once you learn how to use these
correctly. Now let's go over to some live charts and see what they look like in live charts. And I know a lot of you are saying, how do we find these? This is a lot of work to find and monitor. So let's take a look at a live chart. So what do we have here? We have gold and U.S. dollar, and what do we have? We have a very, very beautiful pattern. Okay. Now, we can call this a double, a double top. We could extend the trend line out farther, and we could have had a wedge. But what we now have is a falling wedge, and prices hit the, the top. We're expecting to come back down here to the bottom, and then we're going to decide whether we're going to get a breakout up or down. So we want to watch for a sell point or we're expecting it to break out and break down. Now, these are not used by themselves. Now here, look at this. This is Ethereum in a 15-minute chart. But here we have the formation of a beautiful triangle on the charts. This would have given us a very nice entry level here. And we would have successfully traded it up until that range. Here we have a falling wedge. We have another one that developed here beautifully. Here we had a breakout above, and we could have ridden that here. And look at this here to here to volume. Look at here to here volume. Look at here to here volume. What's happened is the traders, as we're getting to the center point, have left the market. They're unsure. At the point of the decision, look at where volume surges. This is telling you that breakout is a good breakout and a breakup and reinforces that you should be entering that trade. And then on Bitcoin, which everybody's following today, but this week it's gone hell wild again this week. Now, here on Bitcoin, we have a whole bunch of stuff, on, but we came out. When Bitcoin made, made this surge last week, we had this beautiful rising wedge. And price broke down from that rising wedge, but didn't reach any significant level. And then the buyers jumped in the market and pushed this price all the way up. Okay. And this is what happened. Volume did not support this breakout. Then we form this beautiful triangle. And look at this. If we would have taken the formula, dropped it on the charts, this is our target. And look at where it, the price is. It's right in our target zone right now. This would have given you a beautiful confirmation and a, an entry strategy, an entry point. And at this point, you would have been able to trade that and stay in the market all the way up. You wouldn't have panicked and come out here at this level. You would have stayed in here because this is your target zone. And this would have been a very, very smart, safe trade using the formation of a triangle. Okay. So now a lot of people say all of this stuff is difficult. How do I track all this? What do I do? You know, I can't spend my days, and I don't see these things developing. So let's just go get one of my standard charts here. Okay, I want to get this garbage off of here. Now, most charting systems will help you in some way. You can get whole entire charting systems or AEs that will find us like auto chartists, which just drop this all on your chart. Here at tradingview.com, we just go over here to our scripts. Okay. All we have to do is come down here and find somebody who's already written one for us. And let's see if we can find one today that's easy.
because I'm just looking for one of the scripts that'll mark all the the chart patterns for us. Today, you don't have to write most of the stuff. You, you can find out. Everybody's written them for you. And you just have to locate them. Like I said, you can get all types of expert indicators and customized drop downs. If you're using a uh, MT4 platform, they're all available on there for you. Come on. Because once you find one, you can then just add it and it, be, it, be, it remains yours. Unfortunately, I don't. Come on, guys. Hmm. I don't see any. Normally, there's at least one here that will just... Mark for an account. Let me see if I can find one under indicators for us. I'm sorry, I don't see one that's available this weekend. Let's go back up one more. Give me one more second. Okay, but once you, once you find one of these that will put all your, your chart patterns on there for you, it'll, you just find one that's called triangles, find one that's called wedges, and drop it on there, and then you can save it as yours, and then it's just there for you to use whenever you want. It's somebody who's written all of the programming for you. Just hold on one second. Okay, let me... Okay. Uh, actually, this is a Japanese candlestick one. Uh... I'm sorry, and I just save it. See, once you do it, you can save it as your template, and you always have it. Um, and I just haven't done it. I was very bad. I'm sorry about this, guys.
But the fact is, once you find one, or you just can go through the internet and, and locate one, and it's just a script or a um, a um, an AE, and you can use it. Or like I said, you can use Auto Chartist. Auto Chartist is a will not will um, look for all the trends for you and give you the trend action, the wedges, the shapes. It just seems like everybody right now has filled the thing up with mostly candlestick patterns. I'm going to go through this one more time and then we're going to skip this part. I'm sorry. But like I said, you can find these anywhere um, to be used for your and it all, all it does is it automates everything for you. Um, actually, let's see if I can get it on investing.com. Okay, if we go to the charts on investing.com, they offer a similar service. We can go to, say, Euro, U.S. Dollar, and Technical Analysis. And all we have to do is go to... tools and go to their now where do I find it let's go to go their charts first Here we go. We go up to chart patterns and we can then simply list. They give us a custom, you can customize it. We then list what, what assets we're looking for, what type of pattern we want to see, and then we can see them and they'll notify us as, as they're developing. So like here we can see in the Hong Kong dollar Japanese yen, we just had a triangle develop. And oh, you know why? Because it's weekend, so there's nothing to to custom to fill in but you can go set all this up and it will give it to you under used to be here under chart pad they must be moving things around but see then it will give you the you have completed patterns and emerging patterns and it will give you the emerging patterns as they're developing based on the time frame you've customized for so we can see here we have the swiss franc japanese yen Right here, this is because the markets are closed. That's what's going on at the moment. So this is a 15-minute interval because that's how I have my customization set up here. This was at 9.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time last um, Friday. We had a flag in the middle of developing. It was a continuation pattern. It's taken 24 intervals of time. And this is how reliable that signal is. And normally, if you click on the line when it's when the markets are open, it will actually open up the chart, show you where the price is, give you the estimation of the range, and everything else from there. Okay. And so you don't have to you don't have to start searching for chart for patterns. You can want, when you see them come up and you're emerging, and you can, like I said, you can customize them. Uh, it gives you a customization feature here on normally during business hours. And when you customize it to the assets you want to watch, when you have something in a developing pattern, you can then go back and replicate and draw onto your, your chart the exact flag and the patterns develop and watch for it develop yourself. But that's a shortcut in helping you see these on your charts when they're developing. So let's go back to my PowerPoint for a minute. And let's go over this stuff a little bit more because we, then we want to wrap up. Okay. Now, we've looked at all the different patterns. Now, a pattern is simply a series of data. Oh, okay. Hold up a second. 
Uh oh. Okay, a pattern is a series of data that repeats in a recognizable way. It can be identified as the history of an asset being evaluated or other assets with similar characteristics. Remember, we have a continuation pattern. A continuation supports the current trend line. It says that that trend is going to continue. We have a reversal, and we also have some that will give us either, and we're going to wait for that to develop and tell us which way it's going. Patterns often include the study of the sales volume as well as price. Remember, volume needs to support the breakout, breakup, breakdown. Patterns can occur within a downward or upward trend or as marking the beginning of a new trend. There are bottoming, topping, and continuation patterns. Also, combining these with Fibonacci retracement levels, it makes a great trading strategy. So you can combine them to figure out where retraces are going to happen and estimate where the initial move will be and the subsequent move. And if you want to learn more about this, we have a whole new class in retracements and reversals coming up this month, and come join us for that class. But remember, no pattern or no signal or no system or no indicator works on its own. You need other types of indicators to help conform or confirm the development of those trading decisions. So remember, we have symmetrical triangles. We look for breakouts and breakdowns. And we want to look for the cause of the breakout. We want to see where it was. See, like this one, in a hardcore downtrend with a very well-defined resistance and support levels, and we have the breakout, it's a very, very strong signal that is going to occur. But don't get involved in false breakouts. And one of the safest ways to protect yourself is to look at volume. So on that note, I'm going to say good night to everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. We have a whole bunch of new classes on the schedule this month, so make sure you go to the ETX Education Center and take a look at our August schedule. Have a good night now, and thank you for joining us.